Good morning, folks. Welcome to a Queensland Daily Weather Wrap. Today, the 6th of the 2nd, 2023. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update brought to you by our major sponsor, townsvilsheds.com. Check them out if you're in the market for a shed safe, credited shed. All righty. Thanks to the Bureau of Meteorology here. The next three names are Freddie, Gabrielle and Herman, the next three cyclone names. And why do I say three? Well, because there's a tropical low that's rapidly intensifying out here in the southeast Indian Ocean. It's really starting to take shape very quickly. That's uh, definitely the favourite to become Freddy. Uh, then we've got a pretty uh, tight little period here between which one's going to be Gabby and which one's going to be Herman. This system here is going to track east, southeast, and then southwest. Sorry, east, south, and then southwest. And it has the potential to intensify into a tropical cyclone on Wednesday. Today, it's actually going to create some gales over Cocos Island. And then over in the east, we've got a very weak tropical low at the moment, which is going to intensify over the next couple of days as it tracks in a westerly and then southerly direction off the coast of Queensland. And it too is likely to develop into a tropical cyclone sometime on Wednesday or Thursday. So it's going to be tight as to which one's going to be Gabrielle and which one's going to be Herman on this eastern side. But I think Freddie's wrapped up there in the southeast Indian Ocean off the coast of WA. He's getting together very quickly. Anyway, the race is on and the cyclone season's heating up. Right, by 10 o'clock tomorrow, we're expecting our low pressure system to be tracking in a westerly direction across the northern Coral Sea from where it is now, which is northwest of Vanuatu, southwest of the Solomons. As we progress into tomorrow night, we are expecting to see the system continuing to track in a general southwest or west-southwest direction, more likely. As we progress into day three of the forecast, so we're now looking at... Wednesday night, we can see the system is now slowing down its westward motion and likely to beginning to be beginning to adopt a southward motion. As we progress into Thursday night, the system is likely to be adopting a south to southeastward motion. What we're interested in perhaps is going to be some of these more western outliers, which will increase the winds around central Queensland a bit more than what's currently forecast. But right now, we've got a pretty tight envelope of where the system's likely to be. So that's a pretty high degree of confidence when it comes to coral sea systems. And then as we progress into Friday night, we can see the system moving parallel to the coast and down into what we call the graveyard, the cyclone graveyard in the South Pacific. Uh, you can see the system is gradually intensifying, likely to be a Cat 1 or Cat 2 on the Saffir Simpson scale by Friday night, which means likely to be a Cat 2, Cat 3 on the Australian scale by uh, Friday night. And we're probably most likely to see that intensification process taking shape on around about Wednesday into early Thursday. This period where the system slows down its westward motion and starts to develop this southward and southeastward motion, that's when the system's likely to begin intensifying quite sharply uh, into a tropical cyclone. In this westerly motion, it's probably just going to gradually tighten up as it pushes west. But when it starts to slow down and then starts to drift south, that's when it'll take that next step to become a tropical cyclone. Well, that's when we think it's going to take that next step. There's still a little bit of disagreement about how far west the system gets before it starts to move southeast. So this is more of our western edge outlier. Some of the uh, Yahoo channels on social media, I'm sure, will be showing you these ones because they push it right over to the coastline or pretty close to the coastline. And so you get uh, 40 to 50 knot winds developing around the coastal fringe here around central Queensland in this more westernised solution. I think um, the, more, the more likely solution is the system will track and stay just a little bit further east of that. And we're still likely to see some strong winds. Don't get me wrong, we're still likely to see winds gusting up around 35 to 45 knots at various times over the next uh, over the next few days. Particularly, I, was, I would suspect Thursday will be our peak wind period across southern and central uh, eastern Queensland. And the GFS model tends to concur. It keeps the system even further offshore. And the ICON modelling over the seven, next five days or so shows that same sort of 35 to 40 knot uh, wind gust regime across central eastern Queensland. So that's about the extent of, uh, of weather from this system is going to be more so the wind and more so offshore waters than inshore waters. The other thing central Queensland is going to start to see is some big increases in wave heights. You can see those waves three to four metres offshore, initially off central Queensland by the time we get into Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, and then as we progress into Thursday, Friday, those big waves are going to start pushing southwards into the Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast area. You can see nice big long fetch easterly swell, I should say. Nice big long fetch easterly swell coming onto the coast too. So that'll make uh, surfing quite interesting, but only for those who are extremely experienced, of course. Uh, there's likely to be a hazardous surf warning out for a coastal erosion, that sort of thing as well. 
Over the week, dry air to the west of the cyclone, close to the Queensland coastline in the Western Coral Sea is going to make sure that we don't get too much rain from this system. Uh, so the idea is that any heavy rain from this system will be on the eastern side of the circulation. We'll get some gusty showers and that sort of thing coming in on the southwest flow, southeast flow, but uh, there's no substantial rainfall on the way in eastern Queensland from this circulation. To get substantial rainfall, the cyclone wouldn't have to come close to the coast. It would literally have to cross the coast and go inland for us to actually get good rain. And there's no model at all that suggests that that's going to happen at this stage. We go into a lot more depth and detail at join.ozcyclonechasers.com.au of what the on-the-ground effects of this system will be over the east coast and adjacent coastal waters. And check out our subscription options if you'd like to support our work and get access to those updates. Right, let's head into the week, into the day ahead. Right, today we're expecting to see convective activity developing across far northern inland Queensland, parts of northeast interior parts of Queensland and also through central eastern parts of Queensland. We're expecting to see some showers and maybe some isolated thunderstorms. Our biggest area of storm activity expected to be over western Queensland, of course. That's going to be, uh, there's going to be some pretty solid storms out there with the potential for some severe activity too and some organisation about it. Uh, the difficulty we have in storm forecasting over the next 24 hours, just the fact that there's so much cloud cover, that cloud cover may limit storm intensity to some degree, particularly the ones out west here, which do have the potential to become quite strong, but may be limited somewhat by the amount of cloud activity and by the sheer amount of thunderstorm activity that could be taking place out there. Right, so that's into this afternoon. Through the nighttime hours, chance there of continuation of convection across western Queensland and far northern inland Queensland. Maybe a few showers just popping up and becoming quite uh, quite heavy through the evening and nighttime hours across northeast Queensland. And also a few showers just popping up and becoming quite heavy around that Yapoon to St. Lawrence, potentially up towards the Mackay coastline overnight tonight into early tomorrow. And then as we progress into tomorrow, you'll notice that most of our biggest convective cells tomorrow are in far western Queensland. Most of the eastern half of Queensland is stable there's still some showers and thunderstorms possibly becoming a little bit more widespread across the Cape tomorrow and our cyclone begins to take a bit more shape out here. Still a low but beginning to take a bit more shape out here and starting to look a bit more menacing as it continues tracking in a westerly direction tomorrow. The big, de uh, the big change over the next 24 hours, the southeasterly winds are now going to dominate across northeast, central east and southeast Queensland over the next 24 hours. And you can see winds gradually increasing up around 15 to 20 knots, potentially sustained up to 20 to 25 knots through parts of central Queensland's coastal waters and in particular offshore areas. You can see our cyclone or our low at this stage still very weak out till tomorrow morning by the time we talk. Have a good day.